Pick it out of some breaking news out of Hallandale Beach here. Take a look from Sky 10. You can see those firefighters there trying to uh, save those workers there. After some scaffolding that partially collapsed, this is at the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Boulevard. We're told those two workers are not injured but are stuck between the fifth and seventh floor as crews once again at this hour. You can see here happening in real time working to carefully get those two workers stuck between the fifth and seventh floors of this condominium building here from uh, that scaffolding that partially collapsed there. You can see it to the left side of your screen trying to get those workers safely back to the ground and onto that um, what appears to be a, a very high ladder that they are using to try to get those workers down from the fifth and seventh floor. But Christy, as you can see, pretty yeah. high up off the ground. Oh uh, yeah, very precarious situation right there. I would not like to be in that situation, but uh, their safety uh, equipment obviously working here. They're holding on and uh, waiting to be rescued. But you can see uh, right there that this uh, one particular worker is just really hanging on to all that safety equipment right on the side oh. of the building. Yeah, and uh, those firefighters have uh, been there for uh, just a little bit of time right before we came to you from Sky 10 here. So once again, just to give you just sort of a brief overview of where this is, this is the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Boulevard. Those two workers there, part of that uh, partially collapsed scaffolding that they were on between the fifth and seventh floor on the left side of your screen. You can see there with a harness to his back trying to get him down from at least the fifth floor or seventh or even possibly the sixth floor of this condominium building. Uh, and there is a second worker. We understand that they are trying to get down to the ground as they are on this lifted ladder trying to get those workers here. But very, very tough work for these guys and happening in real time in some difficult moments for those workers who were simply doing their jobs when the scaffolding partially yeah, collapsed. Collapsed right yeah. there, yeah, between these floors. You can see the uh, firefighters uh, working and to try to get them into a better position, uh, pointing them in the direction to try to be able to, uh, to rescue them. But you also don't want their equipment to oh, do any right. more damage to the mm -hmm. scaffolding. So it is definitely a very uh, careful situation here. You can see that their stairs are moving here just a little bit here. And the in these moments, you also think about, Christy, to the what ifs of, uh, you know, what could have happened with the scaffolding partially collapsed. You can see it's sort of uh, uh, the left end of that is uh, is pointing downward to the ground. Right. The what ifs of what this could have happened. So these two workers are quite lucky to be alive. Right. Uh, this poor fellow here right to the, the very left of your screen there on the uh, with his back up against the wall. Uh, one foot really is just on that very tiny little bit of the scaffolding and uh, Again, they, he's got the safety harness that is holding him in place, and uh, they're working at, to get as close to him as possible without pro hitting that scaffolding and making the situation even even more dangerous. Yeah, something that you don't imagine as you go up there and just doing your daily job as these workers were doing when their uh, scaffolding um, partially collapsed. But again, in, on the fifth and seventh floor, uh, high up off the ground. Not sure how high off the ground this is, but five stories, as you can imagine, pretty scary. Oh. If Sky Tim would have pulled back and sort of zoom out and give us a view, you would be able to see this is uh, very far, uh, probably uh, two or three hundred feet off the ground easily. Right. So he's definitely holding on to his safety harness there. He's got one one foot on one part of the uh, scaffolding uh, that's broken off, uh, and another. I mean, obviously, it's not even right. It he's on yeah. sort of the side of the scaffolding. It looks like. Yeah, so these fire rescue workers here, uh, first responders are on the scene. Once again, trying to do this work. Uh, this is happening at the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Boulevard. And you can see now that second one is we're able to sort of pan around. So there are definitely two workers, not just the one with his back up against the wall, but the, on the top right hand side of your screen, you can also see another gentleman um, with his hard hat on in the same outfit attire that uh, the other gentleman has on. So two men hanging on right now, really, literally for dear life. Mm. And, and what it looks like is uh, the fire rescue worker there is probably trying to get as close to one of the workers here as possible to get him on that uh, elevated ladder that he is on and then to hoist him in there and then get him to the ground and possibly the second worker as well. Um, from our vantage point, this is Sky Tim once again live for us. You can see pretty high up off the ground, um, a couple hundred feet easily off the ground at the uh, Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive uh, and those uh, workers on the top of the building there, the rooftop, looking down on their co-workers, hoping that this is a very positive outcome as these first responders try to rescue these two workers who are stuck between the fifth and seventh floors of the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Boulevard.
And we're just panning around here. Uh, Sky 10 is uh, getting a different vantage point and giving us an idea of how this situation is uh, transpiring. All right, yeah, we can definitely see they're getting closer and closer, but it's they're doing it very carefully, inch by inch, uh, so as not to, uh, to make the situation worse, and not to have the scaffolding just crumble. And we are staying with this uh, picture here, hoping that uh, we can see um, the safe return of these workers to the ground. Our hope is that uh, this can happen here uh, in a fairly quick amount of time so that uh, we can see these workers safely returned at least to the elevated ladder so that they can uh, make their way to the ground. But this is a very tense situation for yeah, everyone I'm, involved. Yeah, it's very, very tense. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm uh, getting a little sick to my stomach looking at it, to tell you the truth. This is not a, an advantage point that you would want to see. For any worker who is afraid of heights, this is probably not the job for you, and this exactly. is probably not the vantage point no. uh, from Sky 10 here. But, uh, but for these workers here, they are just lucky to be holding on, mm -hmm. considering what happened. And again, just to uh, update some of the viewers who may be watching here, the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive in Helena Beach Boulevard, two workers who are not injured, luckily not injured, but are stuck between the fifth and seventh floors. Not quite sure how high up this is, but at least a couple hundred feet off the ground. So again, if you're afraid of heights, uh, they probably wouldn't have signed up for the job anyway, but their scaffolding right. partially collapsed, and this is the condition that they're in. And at this point, we don't know exactly what they were doing there on the side of the building. We, and we've just lost our shot here for a second. There it's back. Uh, but we could see that there obviously is some construction going on as we were flying over the condominiums. There were a number of construction workers uh, on, that, on the roof watching their co-workers and, uh, and hoping for the best as well, praying as we are that this ends in a positive manner. You can imagine this, this uh, particular rescue worker, uh, they're trained for this kind of no, thing yeah. and very calmly trying to help them to decide what is going to be the best way to get these two men down safely. Well, being calm and being patient, uh, paramount, uh, clearly, for this kind of job. Um, we're trying to get someone hooked up on the phone here, talking with my producer, possibly? Yeah, uh, we're, there, we're working to get uh, the VSO Fire Chief, uh, Michael okay. Kane, on the phone. He's okay. uh, going to be with us momentarily, and he can help walk us through exactly what we're seeing, since we're sort of speculating as to how they're going to be able to get these men down. I'm sure the Chief will be able to help us uh, to understand the steps that are going to be needed. And this is a story that we do quite often here in South Florida, considering all of the condominium buildings, especially along uh, Ocean Drive, that are up. And uh, certainly this is a job where a lot of workers sign up for just to try to, if they're cleaning windows or just trying to get from one apartment to the other to try to fix uh, them or one condominium to the other, just trying to fix them. But, uh, but certainly this is a job that is seen quite often in South Florida. Uh, joining us now by phone is uh, the Broward uh, Sheriff's Office Fire uh, Chief here, Michael Kane. By phone, Michael, can you hear us? Calvin, good evening. How are yeah. you? Uh, how, how are you? Uh, walk us through what, what we're seeing right here. I, I don't know if you have a television monitor in front of you, but just kind of give us an idea of how these fire rescue workers are trained to do what they are doing and what they are trying to do at this very point. Sure. So we received a call around 3 p.m. this afternoon for a couple of stranded uh, workers. Uh, I'm not quite sure um, if the workers are maintenance workers or if they're window washers or what the case was. But in any event, uh, their scaffold um, collapsed and uh, left them uh, in a precarious uh, environment hanging uh, from the side of the building between the fifth and the sixth floor. Um, now, both of these uh, workers uh, were wearing their harnesses, so they were suspended and secure. However, they, had, uh, they were unable to rescue themselves. So we were called out, uh, and we arrived about uh, 40 minutes ago. And at this point in time, we're assessing the scene to determine how uh, we're going to perform a rescue, uh, which we'll do in one of two ways. We'll either perform the rescue from below uh, by raising a ladder to rescue them, or... Uh, we will rescue them from above by sending crews to the roof, and those crews uh, will harness themselves, lower themselves down to uh, the workers, and then secure them in harnesses, and then raise them to the roof. Mm. Wow. Okay. All right. uh, so so this, that explains the workers on the rooftop, uh, Christine. Yeah, exactly. So at this point, uh, this is just a, a, this a particular rescue uh, person is uh, trying to assess the situation and see what would be the best route uh, to go about this rescue. Right. Well, safety is always paramount, so we always choose 
uh, the method in which uh, we can provide the largest degree of safety for both uh, the uh, personnel uh, and uh, the victim as well. So that's what they're discussing now, but um, I, I'm, I'm thinking that they're probably going to do a pickoff, which is uh, the rescue from the roof that I described. Mm. Uh, I was just going to ask you what your thoughts were since you're able to kind of see it yourself and assess the situation. So you think that's going to be the route that they take is to, to rescue from above? I believe so. Uh, but, you know, it, it's a very fluid uh, situation right now, and, and, and that could change. But at this point in time, I think they're going to uh, they're setting up to perform a rescue from above. And let me ask you this. Uh, as you're looking at this scene in terms of this scaffolding, I mean, how stable is that scaffolding? I mean, could it could it continue to drop or is it is it now in a secure position where it's 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 stopped its its fall? Well, that's one of the considerations that we make, of course, when we do an assessment in the field. Uh, the uh, rescue workers will determine what the uh, state of the equipment is, and they will uh, make attempts to secure it even further. Uh, so uh, nothing does happen, and so it doesn't move uh, in a, into a position that could uh, you know, be of a safety concern. But at this point, I don't believe it's going to fall any further. I think it's uh, pretty much going to uh, stay in its current state. And, and Michael, which is the question I was going to ask you, was that a consideration in not doing one of the two rescue attempts that you talked about, the pickoff, versus the other rescue attempt, having that hanging scaffolding there? I'm sorry, you cut off. Can you, can you repeat that? I said, is that sort of a prerequisite to determine which uh, sort of rescue you take here, the pickoff versus the other rescue attempt that you talked about using the ladder, uh, having that hanging scaffolding there? Yeah, there's, there's quite a few factors. I mean, one factor could be the wind. And, of course, you know, this is a seaside condominium. And so uh, that's a factor, of course. Uh, the height and elevation of where the victims are in relationship to the fire truck apparatus and how high that ladder can be extended to perform the rescue safely um, is also a consideration. And those are all decisions that are made uh, between the, uh, the rescue personnel from our rescue team and the incident commander that's operating on the team right now. And, uh, are we hearing anything? Have you heard anything about these two individuals, um, what they were doing on the scaffolding, uh, how they are how they are doing out there? I mean, I'm certain that they're frightened, but are they calm and, and not injured? Sure. So what I can tell you about the victims is that they are uh, not injured to the point that they are that they need emergent um, attention. Uh, I believe one victim. Um, was complaining of some pain to his legs because of the harness that he's actually secured in. Uh, because those harnesses, uh, they are pretty tight, uh, tightly worn around, uh, around the body. So uh, when you're suspended by nothing but the harness itself, uh, you know, that harness is taking the full weight of the, uh, the person. And uh, depending on how tightly worn those harnesses are, obviously they could, uh, you know, impinge, um, you know, nerves, and uh, they could be very uncomfortable. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's a safety procedure. And, uh, you know, they're okay because of the safety considerations that they made today before they went on that scaffold. Uh, absolutely. The harness has uh, made a great difference in uh, life or death for these two workers. Uh, Chief Kane, um, uh, curiously, how much is this a race against time considering that, uh, you know, it, it gets darker uh, or it gets dark uh, more, more quickly? Sure. I mean, certainly we want to be able to perform um, the rescue, while we're still within daylight hours, it's safer for us, uh, it's safer for the victims. However, I have to tell you, um, you know, our technical rescue team uh, is some of the most highly trained uh, personnel uh, in the area, yeah. in, in, in the entire state. I mean, they, they train uh, very often. They train in multiple conditions. Uh, they train in rain. They train in dark. Um, so for them... Uh, it's not really a rush yeah. as much as it is uh, they want to perform the task as safely as possible. And if it goes into uh, nighttime hours, so be it. Uh, they'll continue to go ahead and perform uh, the task at hand as safely. And, and to talk about this technical team. I mean, how often do they train and, and how large is this team? How, how many people will it take to get these two men safely uh, out of this situation? Well, at this point in time, we have about um, 25 or 30 personnel on the scene right now. We have, uh, of those personnel on the scene, I would assume probably about 
uh, half are, are directly engaged uh, in the rescue, uh, whether it be from a rescue component, a strategic component, or a medical resource component. So quite a few people are busy right now uh, performing uh, their task. And then, of course, uh, we have a, uh, <clears throat> a secondary level of personnel to support the efforts of the primary personnel that are operating. Uh, if we have to bring some out for uh, relief, we can substitute another person uh, in their place. So, and, and Chief King, hang, hang with us for just a second here as we uh, head to the top of the hour here. It's about 3.58 right now. Curiously, um, in, in terms of a grade of how bad this uh, scaffolding collapse is and what you've seen in all the years that you've been working them, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, 5 or 6, uh, not really that bad, or this one is really bad? Well, Kevin, what I would say is it's not bad simply because of the uh, protective mechanisms that workers employ. I mean, they're wearing uh, protective equipment that's keeping them safe. So because of that, uh, you know, while time is the essence, we're not necessarily in the need to rush uh, in the sense that they're not going to fall uh, from their current position. Exactly. Uh, they're, they're pretty well safely secured. Uh, had they not been, had they been holding on, um, without the aid of a harness, well, then, you know, that completely changes exactly. uh, the complexity of the operation exactly. and also the urgency of the operation as well. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's hard to kind of give you a number, but I would, I would say, you know, this is, this is a pretty significant event for mm -hmm. us, although we do train for it quite often, uh, at least several times a year. Uh, we perform training like this. Um, so our, our personnel are very well prepared. And uh, I can assure you they know exactly uh, what they need to do to get the task done. And Chief Kane, are, are you near a television monitor? I don't know if you can see this. This looks like a scene out of a Spider-Man movie here. Uh, the, the guys are uh, attempting to do the pickoff, as you talked about, coming from the rooftop there, going down to try to possibly uh, try to get those They'll two workers who are hanging other, by yeah. their, their harnesses there. Yeah, no, I'm not watching with you, but, uh, I mean, I've... Um, I've experienced quite a few of these operations yeah. uh, myself, so I'm, I'm well aware of, uh, of the process. Yeah. yeah, so we actually are uh, watching, so Chief, we are watching uh, one of your rescue, uh, technical rescuers there going down the side of the building toward um, the, um, the, one of the, uh, the two uh, workers who were there. I'm not sure how tall this building is. No, Do, we know? I, Do you I, know much about this building, Chief? I'm not familiar with the uh, height of the building. Um, if I had a guess, I'd want to say about 20 floors, maybe. Wow. Um, and more than likely, the reason that they're um, performing the rescue from above is uh, the biggest consideration is the angle and the uh, the um, uh, how far they can raise the ladder to perform the rescue. And uh, they feel comfortable in that environment. Um, so that's probably rescue from above yeah yeah and, and, and if you are guesstimating uh, uh where these two workers um are in terms of the fifth and seventh floor and how high up off the ground they are how many hundreds of feet would you say they're off the ground and well typically uh mm -hmm. each uh, flight is about 10 to 12 uh feet so if they're at the sixth sixth floor they're about 65 to 70 feet high maybe 70 feet uh, off the ground um i mean it's that's pretty high. 70 feet uh, is definitely a life-threatening uh, fall if you were to fall from that um, from that level. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're 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 not in the greatest of positions, but of course, like I mentioned, uh, they are secure, so they aren't going anywhere. Chief K, let me just sort of recap here. Just just hang with me for just a second it's for our viewers here at the top of the hour at 4:01 right now. Sky 10 over the scene here of a scaffolding that partially collapsed. This is at the Hemisphere Condos off South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Boulevard. Joined now by Eden Checkel. Christy is uh, going to our newsroom right now for her reporting. Uh, we're, we're told that two workers are not injured right now, but two of those workers are stuck between the fifth and seventh floor, and there are two possible rescues that uh, Chief Kane has been talking to us about. One is which uh, some of the workers are coming from the rooftop. As you can see, uh, see, see there from Sky 10, they're, they're coming down with their harnesses possibly 
to get the workers to join them and then take them back up to the rooftop where they are, are going to be taken to safety. The other possible um, rescue is from below where you can see that raised ladder where that fire worker is there trying to get to some of the to two of those workers who again are not injured but one worker is complaining of of some sort of a pain uh, to his leg because of the tightness of the harness uh, that is around him. But uh, but Chief Kane was telling us that this is a very delicate operation. And Chief Kane, if I could bring you back in here to talk about those two possible rescues, what are we looking at right now as those workers are coming down from the rooftop of this condominium building? And what is going to happen when he eventually does reach one of those suspended uh, workers? Right. So I'm watching along with you right now. And uh, yeah, so that worker is uh, slowly making his way to the, uh, the victims. And uh, once he makes contact with the victims, he's going to make a quick assessment to make sure that they are indeed uh, immediately safe and assess their medical condition. At some point, they're going to fasten a, uh, a harness, another harness, more than likely, uh, to each of those uh, victims and, and to a pulley system. And then once they do that, they will slowly raise the victims along with the uh, rescuer uh, to safety on the roof. Or... Uh, they could uh, also lower the victims down uh, as well. So that's also a decision, a consideration that will be made by uh, the incident commander. All right, Chief Michael Kane uh, from VSO Rescue giving us a rundown of how they're doing things there. Again, if you are just joining us right now, firefighters are trying to save workers uh, who are stuck after a scaffolding partially collapsed there. They are slowly working their way down to meet them. He talked about a pickoff from the rooftop, something that they're working on right there. Uh, but we're going to be following this closely, and our Roy Ramos will be making his way there to the scene. So we will be covering this as it goes along. And uh, Chief Kane, if you will, um, this, you know, not to make light of the situation, but this looks sort of like a scene from a Spider-Man movie here as he's making his way down the side of the building. Uh, this is this is pretty awesome to see. And uh, and how long do you think it'll take him to actually get down to where the worker is, strap him on, and then take him back up to the rooftop? If you were to make a guesstimation, yeah, if I had a guess, the entire operation would probably take at least an hour um, to do it. Obviously. Um, you know, as safely as possible. You know, this isn't something we rush into. Yeah. This is something we train for. We train often for this. And uh, it's something that we do very meticulously to make sure we get it right. You know, we don't have the opportunity to make a mistake and do it over again. We have to do it right the first time. Uh, and, uh, you know, we don't get a second chance. And close to 100 feet off the ground. Um, and, and also talk with us, too, if you will, uh, Chief Kane, about the importance of those maintenance workers, possibly maintenance workers, wearing a harness in this situation. If they had not had their harnesses on when their scaffolding partially collapsed, obviously this could have been a very different outcome we're talking about, huh? Yeah, that's something I wouldn't even want to think about, to be yeah, quite honest yeah. with you. I mean, this would be a whole different narrative uh, should that have happened. So thankfully, they, uh, they were well prepared um, and uh, they were uh, harnessed. And I know, Chief, that you'd been talking about the two methods that are used here. But for viewers that are just joining, in, uh, joining us in right now, can you explain how this uh, delicate process works? What exactly is going on at the moment? And they're getting closer to the workers we're watching. Yeah, so like I mentioned before, I mean, at this point in time, you, you see the, um, the rescue uh, worker uh, slowly making his way to, to the victims. Uh, once uh, they do that, they'll uh, determine how best to secure the victims, and uh, they'll either raise the victims uh, to the roof or they'll lower the victims to the, uh, to the uh, ladder apparatus, which it looks like that's what they might do, uh, and, uh, and secure the victims that way. In either event... Um, you know, this is going to probably uh, uh, end pretty quickly as far as getting the, uh, the worker secured. They're very, very close to getting this worker secured. Uh, my expectation is within the next 10 or 15 minutes, uh, you'll see that that worker is, uh, is secured by our personnel and then determination of how they're going to move that, that worker will be made. Chief Kane, curious to, you know, just based on some of your prior comments, you said you've done this kind of delicate work before. What are some of the comments you have heard once you have reached workers who have been in this situation? They're suspended in the air for quite some time and you finally get strapped to them. What do they say? Thank you. Please don't drop me, I'm sure. <laughs> 
Well, let me let me let me go back. I I have not been involved in it firsthand because I've uh, never been part of uh, this uh, wonderful team that we have. Sure. You know, our, our technical rescue team. However, uh, I have been on scenes before where uh, we've had this happen, and of course, uh, you know, in each and every case, uh, you know, the uh, the rescuers, uh, the the victims, are very grateful uh, right. that we were there, right. and of course, you know, it's very satisfying uh, for the uh, rescue workers uh, to be able to do so, you know, to have such a uh, a positive outcome when we uh, come across these incidents. Hmm. When your training pays off. And once again, just for the viewers who are joining us, this is happening at the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Boulevard. We're joined now by Chief Michael Kane with the Broward Sheriff's Office, and we certainly thank him for his time. Two workers were on a scaffolding that partially collapsed. They are not injured, though. One of the workers is uh, speaking of some pain that he's having to one of his legs because of the tightness of the harness. But luckily, he and the other worker were, in fact, wearing the harnesses that, uh, that clearly saved their lives. But they are stuck between the fifth and seventh floors of this condominium building, and we're told it's about 100 feet off the ground. So certainly they are lucky to be alive, but uh, this is what they are calling a pickoff. We understand that Chief Kane has told us about that the worker who came all the way, or the fire rescue worker came all the way from the rooftop there, um, rappelling down to where the, uh, where, where the suspended uh, worker is, who was on that uh, partially collapsed scaffolding. He's going to get connected to him and then take him back up. I understand, Michael Kane, uh, uh, taking him back up to the rooftop, or, or is he going to try to go all the way down to the ground since he's only just uh, five or six floors up there? Yeah, that remains to be seen. Okay. I mean, I'm as curious as you are. Uh, you know, it, it, it really depends on who the incident commander is and who's overseeing the operation at that technical level. It can go either way. Okay. Uh, my assumption is that they may just uh, load the patient into the bucket truck uh, that you see there oh, yeah. and then lower the patient to the ground. But, uh, you know, that, that, that remains to be seen. But that, that would be my expectation. But, uh, again, they could just as easily raise the patient uh, or the victim to the roof level and uh, complete the task that way. Can you talk to us a little bit about the teamwork that goes into something like this? Obviously, you have to work slowly, but uh, also be very mindful of every movement, of every step that you're doing. We do see some firefighters uh, from our vantage point, but tell us a little bit about how you guys go about planning um, to uh, you know, execute an operation like this. Sure. Well, everything goes back to training, and uh, our personnel train uh, uh, they put many, many, many hours of training in uh, months. Uh, doesn't matter it, during the week, on weekends, every opportunity they get uh, to perform, they perform. And uh, you know, we're not only a technical rescue team. I mean, there's others in Broward County, and on the scene right now is Fort Lauderdale, and we work very harmoniously together with Fort Lauderdale. And uh, very often, we're uh, we have each other's back. And in this situation, they have ours. Uh, so, um, you know, they're, they're here working with us alongside of us to perform this rescue. Uh, we train with them often. You have to, to be able to perform these technical um, rescues. And, uh, you know, you're only as good as the training uh, that, you, uh, you know, that you perform. Absolutely. So a lot of training goes into this uh, type of operation. Wow. And, and, Chief, based on what you're saying right now, everything is going according to plan. This is how it's supposed to uh, supposed to look. Yeah, as, I mean, as I'm watching it along with you, yeah. uh, everything seems to be going very, very well here. Wow. Uh, you know, each 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 act we do is very deliberate. Um, it is uh, thought about not once but twice. Um, it is uh, <clears throat> it is uh, they are um, the teams speak with each other uh, before they perform the task, so everybody's on the same page. Everybody agrees with uh, what the process is going to be. And so, so the mystery, while... Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no go, go ahead, Calvin. Go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was just going to say, so the, the mystery here is whether the rescue worker is going to go up or down uh, in terms of where he is going to take uh, the worker who was on the scaffolding that uh, had partially collapsed, correct? Yeah, I mean, they could even they could even bring the work the um, they could even bring the victim right to the side of the balcony there oh, too. Yes, I mean, there's so many right. different ways right. uh, that this uh, that this worker can be rescued. Um, and, and that and that partially collapsed scaffolding does not present any sort of an issue in terms of what direction he goes in the balcony, 
to the rooftop or to the ground? Yeah, again, it, it falls on the shoulders of the incident commander. Okay. Um, you know, and it really depends on their situation. I mean, I'm not clear on exactly what the situation is there. I don't have uh, all of the details mm -hmm. on the construction of the building, and uh, I don't know what the current conditions are as far as uh, wind. Uh, like I said, there's a multitude of factors that go into the decision-making process and how the rescue is performed. And, um, you know, while, uh, while we may perform these rescues several times a year, uh, they're not always performed exactly the same way. It really depends on the current conditions and the incident commander. But having the balconies there could serve as an advantage if that is the route that they choose to go, correct? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, the, the, the quickest uh, that we can get the victim to a secured environment, the better. So if that is the balcony, uh, then that may be uh, a factor and that may be the decision that may be part of their decision making process right now. Now, now you say you are watching with us, but I don't see the second worker, Michael, who was on that scaffolding that partially collapsed or it, maybe it's just my vantage point and how I'm looking at it. But I don't see the second worker who was wearing a harness. Is that the worker with the white helmet that we're seeing there still hanging In the middle on of the screen? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to follow along with you, and it's kind of hard for me to tell. My screen is not very very large, um, but uh, it appears I'm trying I'm trying to look along with you, but the, my screen is very very small. Oh, I understand. I mean, uh, and we have a large screen, and, and uh, I, perhaps it is the worker in the white uh, hat here in the middle of our screen that is uh, the second worker, but. That worker does not appear to be wearing a harness, so that's why I asked whether or not uh, that was, in fact, the second worker on the scaffolding that had partially collapsed. Yeah, it's hard for me to tell. I mean, I see, I see multiple uh, cable lines or rope lines coming uh, down, yeah. so uh, I can't specifically tell uh, what type of harness. But now you can see the, uh, the, you can see the uh, rescuer is securing uh, his harness to that of the, uh, the victim. So it looks like the victim is wearing a harness, and we're securing our uh, our ropes to uh, to his harness. And we know to do a job like this, obviously you cannot be afraid of heights. But this is when you know their testing or their training uh, is really tested. Um, tell us a little bit about how often you see something like this happen, where you know the scaffolding partially collapses, and you have to do a rescue like this. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell. It's not a very common practice. Um, it doesn't happen quite often. If it happens uh, once or twice a year, uh, you know, that, that, that's a lot. Um, but, you know, we do train for it many, many times a year uh, because you never know. You never know what tomorrow may bring. And, uh, you know, while this, you know, as I just told you, this may happen once or twice a year, uh, this could, of course, happen again tomorrow or the next day. So you never really do know. But right. you have to be prepared, and that's, uh, you know, that's why we train as often as we do. Chief Kane, uh, continue to stick with us here. You're listening to the voice of Chief Michael Kane there with the Broward Sheriff's Office. And quarter past the hour right now, Sky 10 over the scene of a scaffolding that partially collapsed. This is at the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Boulevard. We're told two of those workers are not injured. They were stuck between the fifth and seventh floor, crews are now working to carefully try to get them to safety. The question is, how are they going to get them to safety? They are using what is called a pickoff, where, uh, where some of the rescue workers have come from the rooftop there. They have rappelled all the way down to the uh, fifth or seventh floor or the sixth floor of this building to pick off this worker, attach him to what appears to be another harness, and we're trying to wait to see if the fire rescue worker is going to take him up to the rooftop or down to the ground or possibly to one of those balconies he done. Yeah, so this is what we're seeing right now. This has been going on for quite some time. I, I believe you said this something like this could take up, you know, another hour or so, maybe if we're lucky within the next 15 minutes. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of calls you got when, when you guys arrived there. What were you seeing? Um, were residents in the building? Did they mention what was going on? How did you guys first hear about this? Uh, Christy, I don't have that information. I don't know if it was a resident that called or if one of the uh, the workers called from a cell phone. I'm not quite sure. But, but um, guys, I'm going to have to disconnect with you guys and um, get with uh, some other media. 
uh, and give we them understand. some attention. But, we certainly um, understand. Yeah, but thank you. Uh, I Chief Michael Kane, thank you for your time. You certainly uh, have been quite generous with your time. We certainly appreciate everything that you have told us so far. And uh, once again, you're looking at uh, what is called a pickoff here that's happening with the Broward Sheriff's Office Fire Rescue Team. They have been trained to do this kind of very delicate work as they are trying to get this uh, this worker who uh, appeared to be on that partially collapsed scaffolding that happened just at around three o'clock. And uh, he is going to be hoisted possibly to the rooftop there or going to be repelled down to the ground or possibly to one of those balconies to where he is going to be taken to safety. There were two workers there, so neither was hurt, neither was injured as a result of that partially collapsed scaffolding. But we're waiting to see what's going to happen and we're staying with this so that we can see these two workers I'll be brought to safety. And as the chief had mentioned earlier, the good news is that they do have their protective gear, so that's good. Uh, yes, they are trying to work very uh, meticulously, very delicately as they approach the two workers, but this isn't really a life or death situation, thankfully, because they do have that protective gear. But as you can see, they are, uh, it looks like the the firefighter, uh, fire rescue person who's there, who's, who's trying to pick up the person, he's either going up, down, now, slowly well, making his way down, down ground, it looks like. So we're not sure if they're going to make their way to the side, to the balcony. We're, we're carefully watching to see what happens here. Uh, but this happened at the Hemisphere Condos on South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Drive. They're stuck between the fifth and seventh floor. And as the chief had mentioned earlier, this is something that um, happens only a few times a year, but they train for it often to make sure that they know what to do when something like this happens. And it's been going on for more than an hour now. So. Hopefully they can make their way maybe to the side there to that balcony, but they're making their way down. It looks like earlier there was an attempt to go up. They were stuck in the middle for a little bit and now they are making their way down. But there's still another worker that we saw up there and no longer in this. Um, we can see from this vantage point that had a white helmet, so they still have one other worker to uh, get to. But at this point they are helping one worker right now and they are just slowly making their way down. Yeah, it looks like he's rappelling down to the ground, which is really good considering that they're only about 70, 80 feet, as he said, off the ground. So with that being said, um, they don't have far to go. And this is a very slow and delicate process for obvious reasons. We do have reporters who are going to the scene. A local Tim crew is going to be on the scene. Our very Ramos, we're going to check in with him very shortly, just as soon as he gets established. But you can see here, this is happening in real time, a very delicate rescue. They aren't far from the ground. As soon as their feet are on the ground, we will certainly be cheering along with the rest of their families who may be watching. I'm sure they've been notified to let them know what's happening. So these workers are coming to their aid to get this worker. This is the kind of ending, yes, oh, right there, there that are. we have been waiting for. They got this call right after 3 o'clock, so this has been going on for roughly about 90 minutes so far at the Hemisphere Condos off of South Ocean Drive and Hellendale Beach Boulevard. But the happy ending that we had been hoping for. A sigh of relief there, but keep in mind there is still one other worker that they need to get to, and that worker stuck between the 5th and 7th floor there. So we're going to see which direction they choose to go with that worker. It seems as though it did work for them to go all the way down the building, so maybe they'll try that again with the second worker that they still have to get to. Hard to see from this vantage point, but uh, the worker's helmet, white helmet, seems to kind of blend in. Uh, that worker's still up there, and below you can see um, a firefighter, I think, raising his or her hands up to try and get to that uh, second worker with the white helmet there and light blue shirt. Hard to see from that vantage point. Yeah, two, two possible rescues that they could have done. Uh, what, what's one is called the pickoff that we heard from Chief Kane. The other is the elevated ladder you can see in the middle of your screen there. They tried to do that at around 3.30, uh, close to 4 o'clock. They were trying to get the worker onto the elevated ladder. That did not work out. So they had the worker or they had the fire rescue uh, person repel down from the rooftop to do the, what's called a pick off. And when that happened, they were able to attach the fire rescue worker to the victim, to that rescue um, worker there. And so they were able to go down to the ground. And you can see the ending that we had all been hoping for. And you can see to the left side of your screen as well, his colleagues were cheering him on and very happy to see that their worker was brought down to safety. And we should also mention that, you know, both of these workers uh, not injured. So good news there. They're just trying to, you know, obviously get them to safety. This one has made his way down. They are waiting on that second <laughs> worker. And as you can see, it takes teamwork, right? Because they had 
Firefighters all the way down on the ground, some at the rooftop that we saw earlier and some in the middle there by the balcony, uh, just patiently waiting to get to that second worker. So obviously, you know, some discomfort in a situation like this. It's a little bit scary, even though they're trained to, uh, you know, uh, not be afraid of heights to handle something like this, but certainly a sigh of relief when you're able to bring someone to safety and they have a second person to go to. There are three different options as to how they can rescue that second person. So we're going to see which route they choose to go. But it appears that when you go all the way down slowly and carefully, uh, that seems to be successful in this situation. That did work for this one worker. We'll see if that is the route that they choose to take with the second worker. What you're also seeing in real time there, left side of your screen, are Roy Ramos getting ready to talk with us as he is right there on the scene. But it appears that they're taking this worker to the hospital just to be checked out as he is on that gurney. Uh, for possible injuries from being suspended in the air for so long. This is uh, just a procedural issue that they are going to do with him. Uh, but again, we were told he was not injured as a result of being on that partially collapsed scaffolding, which is great news. But his his colleagues off to the side, they're probably going to give him high fives as soon as um, they can get to him. But he's going to be taken to a local hospital just to be checked out. But there is a second worker, we understand. Um, I could not see the worker on that partially collapsed mm -hmm. scaffolding, but it appears to be a second worker who was with this gentleman here who is going to be taken to a local hospital. When they get to him, it is going to be the same kind of rescue, likely a pickoff where they're going to attach him to a first responder and repel him to the ground and hopefully safely like they did this gentleman here. And they have a second uh, stretcher there that we just saw in the monitor um, ready for that second worker so that when they do bring that person down, uh, they are able to take them to the hospital to just get checked out. But we haven't heard of any injuries, so that's the good news here. In a situation like this, it just takes patience, obviously, and uh, teamwork in a situation like this. But if you're just joining us right now, we want to get you caught up. This is happening at the Hemisphere Condos on South Ocean Drive and Hallandale Beach Drive. Uh, two workers uh, were kind of stuck in the middle there. This is after uh, scaffolding had partially collapsed. They just got one person on a stretcher there. That person is going to get checked out. They have yet to uh, rescue that second worker who is still in between the fifth and seventh floors there, but we've seen them successfully bring that first worker down. We're hoping the same thing happens with this second worker. We're just hoping for the best. And uh, as he had, uh, as the chief had just mentioned, there were three different um, options of how to go about this rescue. Hmm. Yeah, one is called uh, the pickoff that they use to rescue the one victim here, the worker. And the second option is trying to use that elevated ladder where you can see the firefighter there waiting to see what's going to happen next with the second worker who was part of this um, partially collapsed scaffolding. So the first option is the pickoff that was used for the first victim, and he was safely taken to the ground. We're waiting to see what's going to happen with the gentleman here in the white helmet at the top of your screen. We believe he is the second victim who needs to be brought to safety. Luckily, both were wearing harnesses, thankfully, and as a result of them wearing harnesses, their lives were saved because they were about roughly about 100 feet off the ground. And if that is the case, if they did not have the harnesses on, it could have been a very different outcome that we could be talking about right now. Local 10 News reporter Roy Ramos is on the scene. We saw him getting prepared and ready. And uh, Roy, I know you haven't been out there very long, but just sort of set the scene for us and tell us the very tense mood that is out there right now. Well, just to give you an idea of where this is located, it's on the backside of the Hemisphere Condos uh, right off of South Ocean Drive and uh, just to give you an idea of how we got back here we had to run between two buildings uh, so it was very difficult for us to get back here you can imagine how difficult it was for them to get a fire truck back here uh, so firefighters uh, do have a difficult task just to access both of these workers who were trapped following this partial scaffold collapse uh, just a few moments ago we did see them rappel down from the roof and attach one of those workers to a firefighter who then brought that worker down to safety. Uh, that worker seemed to be very alert as he was put in the back of that ambulance, but we can't tell you that there are several people here, residents who live in this area, watching all of this unfold. Uh, there was a few people applauding as that worker was brought down. Obviously, they want both of these men to be brought down uh, safely. Um, as we heard, there was one complaining of uh, some pain to his leg because that harness was getting so tight. Um, they have been up here for a good amount of time, um, but fortunately, 
as we heard Chief Kane mention, they were strapped to those harnesses. That the only thing saving their life. They're about 70 feet up. Uh, so if any one of these workers would uh, fall, uh, it would be um, it wouldn't be good. Let's just put it that way. Uh, these firefighters now working to get that second worker down from. Uh, I believe it's somewhere between the fifth and the seventh floor. So you can see that uh, firefighter now raising that that uh, ladder uh, uh, that is on the back of that fire truck right there, uh, trying to locate exactly where that worker is. We can't tell that there are firefighters uh, on that balcony right there. I assuming preparing um, to uh, get the worker ready. Uh, very tense moments here as they try to bring these workers down uh, and do so safely. And Roy, from your vantage point, are you able to see uh, if there is and when there is a rescue of the second worker being brought down or taken up to the rooftop, we're not quite sure, or taken over to the balcony? Are you able to get a clear view of that based on where you are or not? I'm not sure if you're able to see my picture clearly, but it appears there's a few technical rescuers standing on that balcony right there. There's another firefighter that is on the uh, bucket of that ladder right there. Uh, oh, and yes, you can see that worker that is on that scaffolding just below that firefighter that is on that ladder truck. Uh, it appears that they're trying to harness him at this point so that uh, another firefighter will be able to bring him down. Not sure if it's going to be that firefighter that's on the top of that ladder or there will be another firefighter rappelling down from the roof as we saw in the previous rescue. We're seeing more firefighters on the two uh, floors of the balconies there. So I'm wondering if since this worker was closer to the balconies, if if that is the approach they are going to take in this rescue, if they're just going to try to pull that worker over to the side, since I'm seeing at least four or five firefighters uh, from uh, the balconies there. So, oh, yep, working his way over to the balconies, it looks like. Making his way to the right side of the screen right now. If you see, there's a worker with a white helmet. Um, oh, his leg is, is over. Um, just got over and it looks like the firefighter is bringing him down mm. to that ladder there. Oh, so this was a very different, different uh, rescue, uh, much like uh, Chief Kane had talked about. Um, uh, the, you know, based on the two different uh, types of rescues, this was the one that he said was perhaps the safest one that they have used is to try to get that worker into the bucket and then they will just <sighs> repel him down to safety. You can hear them cheering in the background. There you this go. Is you what can hear they people clapping. Yeah, yeah Calvin, I don't know if you could hear me, but uh, you were. Go ahead, Roy. I don't know if you guys were able to hear me, but I assume that what these firefighters were doing at the time was they were going to the worker that was in the, I guess, most um, unsafe position. And that was the worker that was hanging from that harness. For that reason, they brought him down first. This worker, on the other hand, seemed to be in that scaffolding that collapsed and it was in a little bit of a safer position for that reason they were uh, able to leave him there a little bit longer but you can see this worker now being brought down uh, in the bucket of that ladder being brought down to safety and I want to just show you this angle here um, because <laughs> several residents have been just standing by watching all of this unfold you can see them clapping right here I mean the last thing they want to see is uh, anybody get hurt in any of this and what these firefighters are doing absolutely heroic you can see him now radioing down to uh, workers down below uh, before they get ready to lower that ladder there and then obviously put this worker in the back of the ambulance like we saw the uh, previous one uh, do and make sure that they are okay and, and that is correct and Roy just stand by for us very quickly and uh, Michael Kane is joining us back now the chief of fire uh, for Broward for the Broward Sheriff's Office and Michael, thanks for rejoining us here and just kind of talk us through what we saw, a very different rescue the second time around than from the first victim, correct? Yeah, so the, the incident commander and uh, the technical rescue team uh, made the decision to, in this case, uh, load the patient in the bucket uh, of the aerial and uh, lower uh, the patient down to the ground, or that, that, that appears to be uh, what, they're, what they're doing now. I'm watching a feed. I don't know if there's a delay or not, but uh, at this point, what I'm watching 
is uh, the uh, bucket truck being lowered to the yeah, ground. Yeah, that's what we're seeing too. And SOP here, standard operating procedure for the uh, patient or the victim to be taken to the hospital after this just to be checked out, correct? So in these, in these situations, uh, after the rescue is performed, we'll have our medical team um, do an assessment on the patient, talk to the patient, uh, find out uh, what their current st status is and do an evaluation check their vital signs. And at that point, they'll determine whether or not the patient uh, uh, should be transported to the hospital for further evaluation. But uh, in many of these cases, and I think what you saw with the previous uh, victim is uh, so often they, they refuse transport, they refuse treatment. Oh, wow. um, and in many cases, they're not even injured, really. Yeah. They're, they're probably more anxious and scared from the incident <laughs> yeah. itself than actually physically harmed. And in this so. case, uh, neither one of these victims uh, appear to be physically harmed. Yeah. Which is good news there, but really just a collective sigh of relief. We saw all the people out there clapping and cheering with their phones out, recording what's going on. And we see this uh, stretcher out here just in case, uh, you know, if this worker wants to get checked out, that will happen. Um, but you had, you had mentioned this earlier about how there are different approaches and every situation is very different. So uh, can you elaborate a little bit on, on the reasoning behind the two different approaches in rescuing the two workers? Obviously where they were at when uh, firefighters got to them also determined uh, the approach that they decided to take. Yeah, I mean, anything I say would be strictly speculation, but I mean, it could have been that second patient or second uh, subject uh, may have not wanted to uh, be lowered down by rope. Uh, maybe he felt he had enough for the day and just wanted to be in a stable environment like the platform and lowered down. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's one possibility. Uh, could have just been the decision of uh, of the personnel at that point in time. They thought it would be better for the uh, the the, um, the worker to be lowered to the uh, ground by way of the uh, bucket truck. Um, again, you know, it, not every single situation uh, is different. Uh, they're they're not carbon copies of each other. Uh, every situation there's there's always something uh, that's um, you know that's dissimilar between the previous one. And uh, in this case here, you, you know, you, you res we rescued one uh, by lowering uh, that harness to the ground uh, with a firefighter. And in this case, uh, the second victim was uh, lowered in a, in a bucket truck. Um, but in any event, both are safe. Both appear to be unharmed. And, uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, uh, this is a success. This is a good story. Mm -hmm. Chief Michael Kane, yeah. now some final thoughts before we let you go. And check back in with our reporter, Roy Ramos, who was on the ground there. Proud of your team, safe to say? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, and it's not just the people that you saw, um, you know, work um, uh, in the harness and, and in the truck. Uh, there's 30 people behind this operating right now. Um, so, you know, it's a team effort, and it always is. Uh, this is never uh, this is never one individual uh, that uh, that takes the spotlight. This is simply uh, 30 personnel coming together uh, to accomplish a task. And uh, keep in mind, there's hundreds and hundreds of hours of training involved, thousands of hours of training involved with you know calculated uh, uh, amongst those 30 personnel that are on scene. So this is no small undertaking. Um, this is very technical. Um, while they make it look easy, I can assure you it's not. And uh, I do want to mention uh, um, Fort Lauderdale was also very helpful and instrumental wow. uh, in performing this task as well. We work very closely with the city of Fort Lauderdale and their technical rescue team. So I, I do want to mention them as well. Uh, speaking of being a team player, you were a team player today. And uh, thank you for all of the time that you have given us. And uh, we certainly will check back in with you a little bit later on. Chief Michael Kane, Broward Sheriff's Office Fire Rescue Team. Thank you so much. All right, Calvin, take care. Thanks, right. Christy. Bye. Happy holidays.